your children are saying, be exalted, my God, my God, my King. Be exalted. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Lord, we lift up your name. Zachariah 
began to prophesy under the Holy Spirit and he said the Messiah will come and he will come with justice and salvation but Israel beware when the Messiah comes he will not be on an us he will be on an ass he will be a humble servant a humble king a king that will win by stooping. Not a king that will win by conquest. And so it was a prophecy Israel could not understand. And little wonder, when the Messiah came, the Bible said that he stood on the Mount of Olives and he looked over Jerusalem and he wept. Why did he weep? He cried and said, Jerusalem! Jerusalem, I come to gather you like a hen gathers her cheek. But listen, you are so blind, you do not see the day of your visitation. The day of visitation came and Jerusalem didn't see it. Because what they expected is not what came to them. The way they wanted salvation is not the way God gave it to them. And you know Jesus describing himself in Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Say, for my yoke is easy, and my body is light. Sorry, he said, for I am meek and lowly. That is how he described himself. I am meek and lowly. I'm not arrogant. I'm not pompous. I don't operate in king's palaces. I operate in streets, villages. But I achieve my aim. The Messiah God gave to mankind. And this morning, I want to speak very briefly and very, um, very focusedly on what this symbolizes. For us today as people of God and especially for us today as human beings undergoing the scourge or the pandemic called coronavirus. What does it mean for us? In the light of prophecy, Jesus rode from the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem. Brethren, Jerusalem is a city of peace. It may not be peace in actual terms, but it is peace in its meaning. And we know that for us, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. What does prophecy speak to us about today? In the light of current event, it reminds us that there is peace ahead of the way. It reminds us that the end of the news is not violence. The end of the news is not COVID-19 or COVID-19, whatever you choose to call it. I want to remind you that at the end of this whole story, at the end of the journey of mankind, there is peace awaiting us, people of God. There is peace. He travels to Jerusalem. He travels so lowly, but so certainly and so assuredly, he brings peace with him. I want to announce to the people of God and I want to announce to the church as many that are hearing me, even if you are streaming online, I want you to hear it, that at the end of it all, the peace of God will triumph. At the end of it all, Disaster will not have the final word. That is one thing we must understand that when Jesus moved into Jerusalem that day, he was taking a step beyond an event. He was initiating the entire mission of the Messiah, which is to restore peace to mankind. To bring back that which we lost. To bring back hope and to bring back the assurance of God's presence with man. Some other people may have been carried away as the children were singing Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Some other people may be looking, where is it? I bring you what, people of God, it is here. 
it is here because he said my peace I give unto you my peace I live with you not as the world gives I don't give in thanks of the world I give in thanks of my glory say the peace of God that passes all understanding hallelujah finally I know that with what is happening now a lot of people are so, as, um, suddenly interested in eschatology they are interested in how will it be they want to find out what is the place of coronavirus in the history of mankind where is it in the makings of um, the book of revelation is there anything like this of course there is and I want to say this I don't know how many people coronavirus will take I don't know how many more plagues will come I don't know how many more tribulations how many more sicknesses and death I don't know how many more trials how many more pains and disasters both natural and artificial and man made will come upon this earth I don't know how many that will come but I know how it will end do you know how? Let's turn our Bibles to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. If we are there, media. Verse 9, 10, and 11. <laughs> How will it end? Acts, chapter 1, 9, 10, and 11, verse 9. Now, when he has spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10. Verse 10 media. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And verse 11. Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven brethren how will it end the same Jesus that left he will come again the same Jesus that went to be with the father and is seated at the right hand of God that same Jesus will come back that same Jesus will return and I want you to know that he is not coming back as a shepherd anymore he is coming in triumph he is coming in victory he is coming and I want you to know that at the end of it all coronavirus will not be there but the Messiah will be there hallelujah then I said in my own vision what I saw is I saw a mighty stature that had gold, silver, bronze, and, and iron, and iron mixed with clay. But I saw from a mountain a stone that is cut without human hands. It broke every government of man. It broke every system of man. It broke every value of man. It broke every structure of man. And it grew and became a mighty mountain. Listen to me, brethren. At the end of it, coronavirus will not be there but Jesus will be there at the end of it the church will be there I want the people of God to be confident whatever happens to any individual whatever happens to any government at the end of it the king of kings and the lord of lords he will be there for us in the name of Jesus that is the end of it all that is it he has said it and his word would never fall to the ground. Wherever it came from, however it came, whatever anybody likes, let them say, listen to me, as far as I am concerned, I look into the word of God, I look into the heart of God, and I cross my leg. I am waiting to see the end because I know at the end, Islam does not have the final say. At the end, terrorism does not have the final say. At the end, sickness does not have the final say. At the end, coronavirus will not be there. But at the end, there is a stone cut without human hands that grows and overtakes the nation. And the scripture will say, as the waters covers the earth, God will be there for you. 
God will be there for his people. He will be there for mankind. He will restore hope. He will restore. Listen, I don't know how much the system of the earth will change because of what is happening now. The other day, the chaplain told us, the news is already saying that since the Second World War, nothing has affected mankind like this virus. Yesterday, we were with a, a 78-year-old man. He said since he was born until today, it has never been like this. I know a lot of people will keep saying it, but anyhow it likes, let it be. Whatever will change, will change. Whatever will be shaken, will be shaken. But that which is eternal, that which is the prince of peace, that which is from the Father, it remains and abides forever and it will not be shaken and the people of God will not be taken with it in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we bow down our heads this morning? You will be there at the end of it. Because we do not, we do not, I mean, battle in flesh and blood. But our battle, our warfare is in the spirit of grace and in the power of his might. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God and say, Father, I thank you because I will be there. I thank you because you will be there. I thank you because peace will be there. I thank you because terror will not be there. Thank you because sickness will not be there. Thank you because heartbreak will not be there. Thank you because heartache will not be there. Thank you because poverty will not be there. Thank you because joy will be there. Open your mouth and talk to God. This same Jesus, he is the close of the age. John said, I saw the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen, at the end of the day, it will be a revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Let the world say what they may. Let the theorists let the hypothesis be coming out whatever they want to say I know the end and so I keep my faith in Jesus I keep my faith in Jesus I keep my eyes focused on the Lord I keep my hope centered on the Lord because I know that is what counts at the end of it all Sweetest frame 